Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We have the sum of these two integrals, integral x from alpha to infinity of minus cosine x over x. We take alpha to be a positive real number, plus integral x from 0 to alpha, 1 minus cosine x over x. We want to show that this quantity minus log alpha is equal to euler mascheroni constant small gamma. We have an integral here from alpha to infinity. Rewrite it as an integral from 1 to infinity minus an integral from 1 to alpha. This integral is from 0 to alpha. We rewrite the integral as two integrals, the first integral from 0 to 1, the other from 1 to alpha. The two integrals become four integrals. We also have minus log alpha. Let's combine these two integrals. From here, we have cosine x over x. From there, we have minus cosine x over x. The sum of these two integrals is integral x from 1 to alpha, 1 over x. This is equal to log alpha. Log alpha minus log alpha, that's 0. The left-hand side is equal to these two integrals. Let's consider this integral t from 0 to 1 half, cosine 2 by nt, and n is a positive integer. We later take the limit as n tends to infinity. The cosine function is multiplied by this bracket. Inside the bracket, we have pi over sine pi t minus 1 over t. This bracket tends to 0 as t tends to 0 from above. Multiply the cosine function by these two terms, add and subtract 1 over t. We take these two terms together and these two together. We can write cosine 2 pi nt over sine pi t as a finite sum. Consider the sum k from 1 to n of 2 times sine pi t times 2k minus 1 times sine pi t. 2 sine a sine b is equal to cosine a minus b minus cosine a plus b. Applying this identity here, we get cosine by t times 2k minus 2, that's cosine 2 by t times k minus 1. When we add the arguments, we get cosine 2 by tk. We have a minus sign, k minus 1 here, k there. That's a telescopic sum. We get this cosine with k replaced by 1 minus that cosine with k replaced by n. Specifically, the left-hand side is equal to cosine 0, which is 1, minus cosine 2 by nt. Cosine 2 by nt is 1 minus this part. Multiply both sides by pi over sine pi t. We get that this function of t, pi cosine 2 pi nt over sine pi t, equal to pi over sine pi t minus 2 pi summation k from 1 to n sine pi t times 2k minus 1. We take this function of t, subtract 1 over t, then integrate from 0 to 1 half. Here is the integral with these two terms. The integral of sine pi t times 2k minus 1 is 1 over pi times 2k minus 1. In the numerator, we have cosine pi t times 2k minus 1. When t is 0, this is 1. When t is 1 half, the argument of the cosine function is an odd integer multiple of pi over 2. This is 0. When the integral is applied to this part, we get minus 2, summation k from 1 to n, 1 over 2k minus 1. The antiderivative of this function of t is log 10 by t over 2 over t. When t is 1 half, we get 10 pi over 4. That's 1 divided by 1 half. That's log 2. When we take the limit, as t tends to 0 from above, of 10 pi t over 2 divided by t, we get pi over 2. This integral is log 2 minus log pi over 2. This is 2 log 2 minus log pi. In the remaining integral, do the change of variables u equal to 2 pi nt. When t is 0, u is 0. When t is 1 half, u is pi n. dt over t is equal to du over u. The integrand becomes 1 minus cosine u over u. Split the integral u from 0 to pi n into two integrals. In the first, u is from 1 to pi n. In the second integral, u is from 0 to 1. We are interested in taking the limit of both sides as n tends to infinity. On the right-hand side, we have terms that do not depend on n. These are 2 log 2 minus log pi plus the integral u from 0 to 1, 1 minus cosine u over u. Split the integrand here into an integral from 1 to pi n of 1 over u du. This is log pi n. We also have integral u from 1 to pi n of cosine u over u. This sum depends on n. This is the sum of the reciprocals of the positive odd integers from 1 to 2n minus 1. We can rewrite this sum as summation k from 1 to 2n, 1 over k. We need to subtract the reciprocals of the positive even integers. We have sum k from 1 to n, 1 over 2k. From this sum, k from 1 to 2n, 1 over k, subtract log 2n. We get minus 2 between brackets summation k from 1 to 2n, 1 over k minus log 2n. We added 2 log 2n, so we need to subtract 2 log 2n. 
from this sum multiplied by two, subtract log n. We need to add log n. From here, we get minus two log two, minus two log n plus log n. This is minus log n. Minus log n, minus log by, that's minus log by n. These terms go away. When we take the limit of the right-hand side as n tends to infinity, we end up with this integral, which does not depend on n. We get this integral minus integral u from 1 to infinity, cosine u over u. This difference and that one tend to small gamma as n tends to infinity, euler mascarini constant, our result has minus a small gamma. This is the limit of the right-hand side as n tends to infinity. What about the left-hand side? We can apply the riemann lubeck lemma, or we can just do integration by parts. Cosine 2 pi nt dt is 1 over pi n d sine 2 pi nt. We get a finite result when we use the limits of integration. Because of this n in the denominator, this term tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. When we do the integration by parts, we also get minus 1 over 2 pi n sine 2 pi nt, and then the first derivative of this function with respect to t. We can show that the integral has a finite value, so this part also goes to 0 as n tends to infinity. If we study the magnitude of the integral, this is upper bounded by the integral of the magnitude. That's the triangle inequality for integrals. The magnitude of the sine function is upper bounded by 1. We are left with this difference here. The square of sine by t is upper bounded by the square of pi t. Take the reciprocal of both sides. So 1 over the square of sine by t is greater than or equal to 1 over pi squared t squared. Pi squared over sine squared is greater than or equal to 1 over t squared. T is from 0 to 1 half. Cosine by t is non-negative. If we multiply both sides of this inequality by minus cosine by t, the inequality is reversed. Add 1 over t squared to both sides. In the upper bound, take 1 over t squared as a common factor. In the bracket, we have 1 minus cosine by t. For x between 0 and 2 pi, cosine x is greater than or equal to 1 minus x squared over 2. So 1 minus cosine x is less than or equal to x squared over 2. Applying this to our case, 1 minus cosine by t is upper bounded by pi squared t squared over 2. The integrand here in magnitude is upper bounded by pi squared over 2. We are integrating from 0 to 1 half. This quantity is finite. When we divide by n and take the limit as n tends to infinity, we get 0. The left-hand side tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. This means that this part here is equal to 0. At the very beginning, we showed that this part is minus log alpha plus integral x from 0 to alpha 1 minus cosine x over x minus integral x from alpha to infinity cosine x over x. So this quantity is small gamma as required. We can write down the integral x from alpha to infinity of minus cosine x over x as small gamma plus log alpha minus integral x from 0 to alpha 1 minus cosine x over x. One use of this formula is to obtain a series representation for the cosine integral on the left-hand side. We can replace this cosine x by its series representation and then integrate term by term. Cosine x is summation n from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the n x to the 2n divided by the factorial of 2n. 1 minus this sum is minus the sum starting from 1. Minus 1 times minus 1, that's plus 1. Now integrate term by term. The integral of x to the 2n minus 1 x from 0 to alpha is alpha to the 2n divided by 2n. This is the series representation of the cosine integral.